Major support for these programs is provided by Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and Perfect Building Maintenance, New York Community Bank, All Nation Renovation, Kilroy Architectural Windows, New York's Window Company, Greenberg Traurig, LLP, m and Bank. Additional support is provided by AVR Realty Company, LLC, Ackman Ziff Real Estate Group, LLC, Bingham McCutcheon, LLP, Briarwood Organization, Capital One Bank, C.B. Richard Ellis, James Orfanides, Centurion Holdings, Cushman and Wakefield, Dimes Savings Bank of Williamsburg, Douglaston Development, DDG Partners, Eastern Consolidated, Hal Fetner, Durst Fetner Residential, Friedman LLP, Accountants and Advisors, Gemini Real Estate Advisors, LLC, Genova, Burns and Gian Tomasi, Grubb and Ellis, Investors Savings Bank, Jack Jaffa and Associates Real Estate Consultants, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, Madison Realty Capital, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Meridian Capital Group, Margolin Weiner and Evans LLP, Certified Public Accountants and Business Advisors, Newmark Knight Frank, RAL Development Services, The Spandrel Group LLC, Siami Development, SJP Properties, Site Comply, Sterling and Sterling, Stephen Napolitano, The Wickhoff Group, Urban American. So here we are. It's happy days are here again. That's that's what I'm hearing. You know, the banks are lending. The world is getting better. But your favorite Dr. Doom and Gloom is not certain about that. But as opposed to me giving my uh, opinion, I brought together the bankers, the guys who have the bucks, the people with the money to provide their insight on the state of the banking. My guests today include Peter Darcy, Group Vice President, Head of um, New York City for M&T Bank, uh, Kermit Dyke, First Senior Vice President and Chief Lender uh, for Valley National Bank New York, uh, Ben Stacks, Market Manager uh, for Capital One Bank, not Capital One Credit, but Capital One Bank. And last but not least, Another good friend, Steve Kenny, the market manager for New York and New Jersey for Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. So you guys are the gorillas. You guys are the guys who have money. I mean, how big are you? I've lost count. I, okay, you lost count. I mean, but I mean, third largest bank, second largest second bank, largest. second largest bank. You, after Wilmington Trust, you're not a small bank. Yeah, you're, you know, you're the you're the, the baby. We're, we're the baby gorilla. You're the baby gorilla, and him, you know, they they're large. So what's happening? Am I wrong? Is it irrational exuberance? Money is returned. I remember a couple of years ago I did a show that <laughs> was like going, as I would say, the following, you know. For my Jewish friends, I was at a shiva. For my Catholic friends, I was at a wake. <laughs> okay, now I'm at celebrations, closing parties, dinners, right? What's going on? There are deals to do. We would have, uh, in 2009, we did $200 million of new originations, which was... 10% uh, of what we might have done in an average year in our business in New York City, maybe 15%. Uh, we've done about a billion three in the last six months, and most of that would have been originated or conceived in uh, starting the second half of last year. Did about 800 million in December as the year end closed. So it wasn't that we wouldn't have done things before, there weren't things to do. So our borrowers, great, great, uh, deep, um, excellent operators in New York are buying things, they're building things, they're trading, they're refinancing, and uh, uh, we're there to help them, as are others. But I, I think that is, it, it, with, re, with regards, especially since I assembled all four of you, all of you have that similarity. I mean, you're not lending, you know, we were talking prior to the show that a couple years ago there were banks called 
Liberty Point, Park Avenue, Chorus, Silverton, Fremont. You know, these aren't around because they were, they didn't deserve to be around. You know, they, they had made some errors in judgment, you know, and, you know, they, certain people were there. You're looking at a certain criteria and you're all competing with each other. I mean, isn't that the reality, what's going on? You know, the, the really good deals, every one of you wants the same deal. Oh, without question. I mean, you've certainly had a weeding out of the banks, s several of which you named, uh, some of the Irish banks, some of the German banks. Oh, I forgot the Irish banks. As well. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, I, I'm sorry, yes. Only one place could do $16 billion of bad loans. Okay, that's why they're owned by the government of Ireland. But it's become much more of a domestic-dominated uh, industry, at least here in New York these days. And, you know, all of us sitting around the, the table here are, are We're competing. not Deutschland? <laughs> are competing for, for those same types of transactions. In addition, you had a weeding out on the borrower side as well. So um, the well-heeled, uh, deep-pocketed uh, sponsors are, are out there again, you know, to piggyback off of what Peter said. Um, I think to, to some degree, the, the, there's, the risk-reward continu continuum has changed to some degree, and equity leads us back into... Uh, a robust marketplace and the equity sees value and sees opportunity and uh, we're meeting with those clients discussing transactions and uh, and finding ways to uh, uh, to distribute money to them as well and uh, and everyone is is circling those same 30 or 40 or 50 names depending on you know where you draw the cut line uh, so that definitely has to some degree um, the, the competitive pressures of supply and demand have uh, have uh, have made it more difficult to win deals or to uh, um, to hold the line on your first bid. You know, you, you brought up, and I'm happy that you did bring up the fact that I forgot about bringing up the Irish or the German. You had a stint with the German banks. I did. So a short one. Uh, but, but but let's look at it this way: the German banks and, and the Irish banks. They weren't depository counters. They didn't really care about relationship banking that all four of you, you want to have, you want the deposits, you want to have mm -hmm. an account relationship. What, what, what was different then, you know, with the foreign banks? How they lend? How they look at the market? Um, I think they were more national in scope in, in, a, lot of, uh, in a lot of degrees. Um, I think they were just more um, wholesale type institutions. They were, these were the, the, um, you know, the, the foreign outposts, if you will, for them to uh, employ capital into a market that they thought there was a lot of value in and, and they could get good returns on their money. Um, so they were just here doing wholesale business and it kind of didn't matter. It, it mattered to some degree who they were doing business with, but, but not mostly. I mean, they were doing a lot of stuff around the country where they thought they could get a lot of yield. But let's also look at Capital One. I mean, Capital One really made their entree to the banking. I mean, they started when they acquired Hibernia. It right. was the first bank. Capital One is in New York how many years now? Five? Uh, well, uh, actually forget, four. So it's four years. Yeah. So, I mean, what are, what are you looking for Today, what type of clients is Capital One looking for? I mean, now? we're really building off the the original portfolio uh, from from our acquired institutions, and we're really you know uh, gleaning out the the better clients from that portfolio, and we're trying to build a new business based on you know solid clients and uh, and um, people that we can cross sell business to. So it's it's really we're really in growth mode, like. All of our competitors. Yeah, but you know that I think it's a very interesting situation because Kermit, I mean, Valley is, has always been a great New Jersey bank, and you know you were you've been a, let's basically say most of your career you were a New Jersey banker, you know, personally. Personally, well, I've only been with Valley about ten years. Right, prior but to with that, the other banks, city. right, right uh, but other things. But Valley really didn't get into New York until they bought Merchants. Two thousand and one. Right, so it's 10 years that they're over here. Mm -hmm. And how, how does Valley look at the real estate market? Because you are the smaller bank and you're probably, you're not gonna, how large of a real estate loan would you do? Uh, we have a single loan hold limit of 15 million. Uh, having said that, we do club deals in larger, uh, in larger loans. Uh, we will look at larger loans, try and sell it down. Uh, so we generally operate in the, compared to you all, the smaller end of the uh, of the market we and, will, and what do you 
how, how is Valley, I mean, because it's, you know, the bank is, you know, and you're part of the credit process, how are you looking at the real estate market? Since there's a different, New York City is different than New Jersey. We were saying that before, it's different than Westchester. How do you look at New York and Long Island and so on in today's market? Well, I mean, we're looking at it on a deal-by-deal -deal basis, and if the metrics are good, uh, absolutely. We'll, uh, you know, we'll underwrite a deal and do it. Um, you know, I've, I've always referred to Valley as sort of the plain and simple and dull and boring bank. You know, we've continued to just chug along doing what we've always done, uh, underwriting deals the way we've always done them. Uh, have we tightened up our standards through the last uh, decline? Uh, sure. Uh, but uh, we continue to, uh, to move along and do deals. Recently, uh, we had a great first quarter, by the way. And our real estate, uh, our CRE portfolio was up about 2.3% uh, in a quarter. Earnings were up 30 percent. I mean, we did uh, we did very well in the uh, in the quarter, uh, and the increase in CRE was on the strength of some uh, owner occupieds in Jersey, a couple of owner occupieds in uh, in here in New York, uh, but we've also gotten back into the underlying uh, co-op um, business, cooperatives, financing co-op building. No, no, uh, the underlying mortgage. Underlying mortgage for a cooperative building, mm -hmm. but that now relates to a good question. 2008, as you said, you know, your volume was down, your volume, everybody's volume was down. How do you, are you, would you make loans? Are you in the market? And I mean, for all of you, this is not looking at one of you out. Are you in the market to do construction financing one? Are you in construction financing for rental buildings? And what about that word, which was not that good, condominiums? Uh, we are active in the construction business. Uh, we are active in financing uh, re rental property, but we currently are not active financing condominiums. Ben? Yes. On both? All of the above. So but, but why, why let me are... step back. Uh, okay. We're sponsorship driven. And I think, you know, I think we're probably all going to say the same thing here uh, tonight. But um, if it makes sense from a sponsorship standpoint, we will look at it, whether it's condo, whether it's retail, whether it's uh, multifamily rental. Um, not going to do spec office probably, but we'll see. Um, but uh, it, it's really a sponsorship driven issue for us. And to the extent that the sponsorship makes sense, we will make an effort to get the deal done. Do you think Valley would do a condo today? We'd have a difficult time underwriting it. Our but construction it, portfolio in the first quarter was off by about 3%. Uh, we're not that anxious, but with the proper, uh, proper capitalization and proper sponsorship, Pete? Absolutely. We've done, we've probably financed more of them that have happened than most of our competitors. And uh, we've also, and, and to get back to your first question, what's driven a lot of the volume has been financing distress. So that comes in with the condos as well. It hasn't just been ground up deals. We've been following our customers and a lot of our customers have been getting into buying some of these large blocks of unsold condo units. Very tough to finance, but with the right amount of equity and the right point and the right structures, they can be very attractive and, and there'd be examples where we're not ruling anything but, but out. But now that, that also relates, you know, if I, if I was here uh, and I was here in 2008 and I posed the question about financing land, <laughs> somebody would say to me, do not pass go, do not collect $200, do not talk to me. But that was 2008. I mean, the world was ending in 2008. So I'm in wasn't 2011, that? but I'm not certain that the world is. That, I, you know, we were talking that the world is getting better, but you know that the consumer is getting hurt. You know, the the, the working class. I mean, you know, Tiffany's may be fine, but you know, the, the market isn't that great. Two land prices. deals for a second. We did three land deals in last year, sizable land deals, syndicated them all successfully. Um, they were in for residential properties, so the world, there are definitely some scary things to think about, but when it comes to residential construction in Manhattan, if you could buy the sites, put enough equity in and have a sensitized break even for the bank, the vacancy rate and the fundamentals in Manhattan are very strong and, and there aren't land sites available, so there's not going to be a lot more I, of them. I, I, I'm, a, I'm in total agreement with you, but I, the biggest problem that I have with construction financing in general on land or new construction is the fact that we don't have the 421A tax credits. And unless you do an 80-20, which for my audience These means 20 percent, okay, 20 percent is affordable so that you're able to get the tax situation, it's next to impossible to do a loan. I mean, 
passing through those taxes are outrageous. You, know, Mike, you and I have talked about land in the past, and, and uh, we've been very selective uh, thus far. We've, you know, we've done two land deals at this point. That said, we have two more in the shop right now that, uh, that we're looking at. And, and uh, again, the right, the right sponsor, the right opportunity, and the right exit. Um, you know, whether it's multifamily, which, you know, I think most of us uh, have a good sense of what the exit can be, notwithstanding some of the issues you, you, that still need you know, to get resolved in all I, I think, you know, there's an interesting thing. Since Kermit and I are closer in age than the rest of us over here, um, I'm picking on you again. I'm picking on myself, too. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, I remember when I did a lot of bank consulting, and they were the five C's of credit. <laughs> you know, this was indoctrinated into you and even for the younger guys even peter who is our youngest over here you know they, ask him about his land loans that he made and i guarantee you he hits all of those criteria right so, so the, the criteria is continuing for the strong banks sure but you know we, we're talking about forgetting land let's talk about retail because retail is you know you know, everybody was tell, saying to me and i was one of the people also you know the the, the, the standard comment was I would take, you know, grocery anchored retail. That was a great item. But I do remember there was this chain called A&P and Pathmark who filed Chapter 11. I mean, who would think that A&P and Pathmark would file Chapter 11, grocery anchored retail? How do you look at retail today, Kermit? Well, well we did a, uh, a, um, a retail uh, construction loan in Brooklyn for somebody that you know well, um, and I believe uh, M&T um, was in that deal as well, pre-leased retail. Um, Urban okay. retail Fine. is, you know, but here, here is the, the big question. And I, 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 I did a speech the other day, and I said this to someone. I said, you know, 10 years ago, there was a company called uh, Sam Goody. There are no more records stores so they say 10 years ago five years ago there were borders Walden's Barnes and Nobles in five to ten years there may be a much smaller number of bookstores uh, ten years ago we had the whiz we had Circuit City we had retail you know, concepts change all the time right I mean I think the location issue is especially important with retail so um, more than in any other case, I think. So if you, um, if you have the right location with the right operators, and again, you make a conservative deal at the, at the right leverage points, you know, I, I think it, it'll stand the test of time, especially if it's a good location, so. Look how many high-end thoroughfares have developed over the last two decades in Manhattan or expanded. I mean, it's not just Madison Avenue where they're getting, even though those are spectacular rents or Fifth Avenue, but what's happened on Broadway, uh, but those are certain, those are look excellent retail locations. But if you go to First and Second or Third Avenue, you're going to see a lot of vacant retail. A lot of retail. problems, I agree. You know, there's a lot of vacant retail. Now, when we talk about retail, you know, that, that's one change. But another market which was the first to get terrible shape was the hospitality. And all of you have seen hospitality loans. I mean, and all of you have shown an interest. I mean... But let's also remember that 9,000 rooms hit the market last year. And business is good, but with 9,000 rooms, which was approximately 11% of the, of the volume, it's, you know, it's up there. I mean, how do you look at hospitality? The today? ADRs have plummeted, but the occupancies are stronger than ever. Thank you. The ADRs, the average daily rate for my audience, have dropped. They have not recovered. But the occupancy. Occupancy, and you look at the, the dollar, how weak the dollar is, and that's not, I mean, that can, that can move around, but that's funneled and really fueled this tourism boom. And the hospitality industry is extremely healthy um, right now in, in Manhattan. It's very, very strong. And I think everyone sitting here would entertain a hospitality loan? I would, um, but very selectively. And, and, you know, the criteria for, for me is uh, uh, to try, try to pick the ones that, given supply and demand will always be prevalent in the marketplace, that it will be less susceptible to supply demand imbalance. So, so I can't it find, you, you real, probably won't go to Long Island City no, it has for, to, it for has the 14th hotel has in Long to be Island real, City. It has to be real unique. You know, the, the, to some degree, this business is really very simple. 
It's about sponsorship, cash, location, and then being disciplined. And those are easy things to say and hard but, things to do. You know what? Do. I think the last item that you brought out, being disciplined, isn't that been a bit difficulty, not for, for you, but isn't that been a difficulty in the banks that you guys acquired? You know, you know this discipline. Well, some of the ones we've acquired recently, not the one we're about to require, no. acquire, but uh, have had no discipline whatsoever. We got two FDIC assisted deals. Uh, banks that were shut down by the FDIC and we acquired the uh, the assets and uh, the underwriting and the discipline was not there. And I, and I think Ben brought up prior to the show, we were even talking about discipline of the bank that, you know, Capital One acquired. They had a great portfolio, but part of it wasn't that disciplined either. Right. Uh, look, I think it happened to a lot of people too. I mean, I think it was irrational exuberance. It was a great time. Of, the world was in good shape over there. Towards what, the end of the what cycle, about, you know, we talk about condominiums. Let's talk about: Would you entertain? Do you think a any of you a development of new single-family homes? Or, I mean, that's been a, a tough market. I mean, you don't see land. You know, I'm not talking about the Pulte or the Toll Brothers. I'm talking about a regular developer. Yeah. Someone I, else. institutionally, the Bank of America, Merrill Lynch has and, and, and will continue to. Out of our office here in New York, we don't manage that segment, so I'm, I'm a little bit out of my territory when I, when I, talk, when I talk about it in any, to any degree Hermit, of detail. We've, we've been very cautious. Um, you know, in New Jersey, we're a very large real estate uh, player. We're the 800-pound gorilla in northern New Jersey, uh, and we have been uh, involved in uh, construction stick development uh, but uh, we've been very cautious over the last couple of years, and we haven't really, certainly in New York, we haven't really gotten back in, um, into the market much. We, we did it actively. There's not much to do there. We're not as enthusiastic about that, but when you look at the deals when they got done in that sector and compare it to how a commercial construction loan got structured, the amount of equity, that the, the depth of the sponsor relative to the loan size, all of that, there are much riskier deals across the board the whole time. The week before uh, this show, I had uh, a person who I have very high regard, who was part of a good company, and they have been a very successful assisted living. Um, you know, they operate high class, you know, assisted living. Do you think you would entertain an assisted living loan? Not at this point, no. We have a burgeoning healthcare uh, operation in, in New York. Uh, we've got a very big one in New Jersey, and uh, we just bought over a person to uh, to open it up in uh, in New York. And assisted living, sure, we would uh, we would do that. Steve, uh, the bank has a, a a business unit that that specializes in you know healthcare, and and that would be booked out of uh, of that that particular uh, unit. So you know we focus on multifamily, retail, well you know land, hospitality, and and office. I hear office. But I, you know, I'm, I'm not certain. I, I think I heard Ben talk a little bit about office. I mean, office is, is very location centric. I mean, certain parts of New York City with a sponsorship, I know you've done a, a great uh, sponsor, you know, the Kaufman organization with Invesco, you know, good, and good people over there. But the New Jersey office market, Kermit, has never, Long Island and New Jersey is not a great. With the exception of Hudson County, you know, <clears throat> which which is a different market. I mean, you know, there's not much going really going on in New Jersey office. Yeah, um, there's. I mean, I mean, it's it's stable. It yeah. doesn't go up. Yeah. You know, you you can you can make a loan, but it's really on the stable. One asset class that we haven't discussed is industrial. How do you have you entertained industrial? I mean. We, we do a lot of uh, owner-occupied uh, CRE. Uh, we've done a fair amount of that, uh, both in New York and New Jersey. Uh, some of it industrial. Yeah, we, li we like it. And uh, if you go to Long Island City or core markets that are very close to the city that are, have good access to transportation, good ceiling heights, not a lot of columns, good product, good operators, it's a, it's a fairly stable business for people who do it well, and, and we like that type of sponsor. You know, we, we talk about the boroughs, 
Now, you know, I, I made my, my, my joke before about hospitality in Long Island City, that there's no need because of <clears throat> the number of, over there. And, you know, the reason that hospitality did okay in Long Island City was the fact that there was the spillover from Manhattan going over there. Mm. How do you look at Brooklyn in other, in other aspects? I mean, downtown Brooklyn? Uh, well, actually, not to steal uh, Steve's thunder, but we teamed up with Bank of America last, at, late last year to do an 80-20 deal on Flatbush Avenue that they led. So, um, again, 80-20 being uh, rental apartments. Right. So. Kermit? I like the boroughs. You like the boroughs? I like, uh, I like Brooklyn, uh, Queens. Uh, we're soon to get our toes into uh, Nassau, Suffolk, Long Island through an acquisition. Here, here's my question. You know, it's, it, it's, it, it's in the boroughs, but, you know, it, it's, um, what, what about the, the Bronx? You know, have have you entertained? I mean, because the Bronx has a different. I mean, there's been some great retail. You know, that Related has built mm -hmm. right. in the Bronx and so on. But the Bronx, other retailers really doesn't do well. I mean, have you have you looked over there in, in the Bronx and other markets? We have quite a bit of retail and multifamily in the Bronx, but the uh, urban retail in the Bronx. It's a very dense area. The retail. There's a lot of great retail. Now, I, I have two guys who live up in Westchester County. How's the market doing over there, and how would you would you lend up in Westchester County? I know both Ben and you live up in Westchester County. We have an office in Westchester that that's separate, and we, we're pretty active up there. I, I look at my town. I'm in Larchmont. I know Ben's in Rye, and there's a lot of vacancy. Um, it's starting to get filled up, but it's not as vibrant in terms of absorbing some of the vacancy as it's been in Is the city. Is that your market? It is. We don't uh, we don't see a lot of activity out of uh, out of Westchester, the Bronx. Uh, we we've done our f a fair share, and and uh, including you know the the project uh, for related that you mentioned, as well as uh, some some other less high profile sites there. So you know we like the Bronx. We like the demographics there. Uh, we'll do stuff selectively in Westchester, but I mean, for instance, the office market is I think sixteen percent vacant right yeah. now. So, um, so, so so we're very careful. So in summation. <clears throat> Things are okay if the guy has the five C's of of good quality and it's a good borrow. There's money, and uh, hopefully, um, 2011 be a good year for the economy and a good year for banking. And I'd like to thank Peter Darcy, Kermit Dyke, Ben Stacks, and Steve Kenny. See you next week. Major support for these programs is provided by Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and Perfect Building Maintenance, New York Community Bank, All Nation Renovation, Kilroy Architectural Windows, New York's Window Company, Greenberg Traurig, LLP, m and Bank. Additional support is provided by AVR Realty Company, LLC, Ackman Ziff Real Estate Group, LLC, Bingham McCutcheon, LLP, Briarwood Organization, Capital One Bank, C.B. Richard Ellis, James Orfanides, Centurion Holdings, Cushman and Wakefield, Dimes Savings Bank of Williamsburg, Douglaston Development, DDG Partners, Eastern Consolidated, Hal Fetner, Durst Fetner Residential, Friedman, LLP, Accountants and Advisors, Gemini Real Estate Advisors, LLC, Genova, Burns, and Gian Tomasi, Grubb and Ellis, Investors Savings Bank, Jack Jaffa and Associates Real Estate Consultants, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, Madison Realty Capital, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Meridian Capital Group, Margolin Weiner and Evans, LLP, Certified Public Accountants and Business Advisors, Newmark Knight Frank, RAL Development Services, The Spandrel Group, LLC, Siami Development, SJP Properties, Site Comply, Sterling and Sterling, Stephen Napolitano, The Wickhoff Group, Urban American.